Hi guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are going to go over how to sculpt a stylized hand like this. I've prepared a couple of base mesh blueprint images to help with this stage if you want to use them to follow along. Link to the Dropbox folder is below. Before we start, I'd just like to mention I do make use of some built-in Blender add-ons. The first is the Extra Mesh add-on. This gives the rounded cube and single vertex options under the Add Mesh menu. These are very helpful in sculpting and modeling in general. I also have the Bool Tools add-on enabled, which helps with quickly adding Boolean modifiers. We will be using it to join our base mesh objects later in the video. I also have Align to View for new objects under the Editing menu enabled. This is set to World by default, I believe. Just a personal preference of mine. Don't forget to click Save Preferences before closing out if you make any changes. Okay, so getting started. One on the numpad for front view. Shift A and add the front reference image. Then three to go to side view and then add in the side profile reference image. Then you can move them out of the way like this. You can change the transparency of the images by clicking here. I'm going to reduce it down a bit. You can also change the visibility of the image by changing the side option to front or back. You can also change whether the image appears in perspective, orthographic, or both. These options can be handy when you have many reference images from multiple angles. Okay, let's get started with the block out. Shift A, adding a rounded cube. I'm going to change the radius to 1 and then the arc divisions to 16 for a little bit better malleability and control when sculpting. Now control tab into sculpt mode. I'm going to turn off sculpting symmetry as we don't need it. Then I'm going to select the elastic deform brush to start forming the rough shape of the palm. You can also use the grab brush if you prefer. To dig out the well of the palm, I switch to the clay strips brush and then hold control to invert it. This gives me a brush that effectively digs or takes away from the mesh rather than adding to it as it normally would. This is a shortcut I use often. I'm also holding shift while sculpting to quickly access the smooth brush. Holding shift while using any brush will give you the smooth brush. This is also a very handy shortcut when sculpting. Shift A, adding another rounded cube. I'm going to use an operator preset called Capsule for the fingers. You can see it creates a longer pill shape, which is great here. I'm going to tab into edit mode and then press Alt Z to toggle X-ray mode and then pull the bottom vertices up to shorten it up a bit since it's a little bit too long. You can also change the length of this in the add menu. 
Then I will rotate and scale it into place to start forming the index finger. Once that's done, I'm going to shift D to duplicate this for the middle section of the finger and then again for the fingertip. To give the fingers a little bit more shape, I'm going to tab into edit mode and then press Control R to add a control loop and then S to scale it up a little bit. Once I have all three sections of the fingers rotated into place, I'm going to select them all and then press Shift D to duplicate to create the other fingers. I try and keep a little bit of space between each finger so that they don't merge too easily later when we start sculpting. Okay, so now we're ready to start joining the blocks. Once again, I would suggest enabling the Bool Tool add-on if you haven't already. I'm going to shift select the thumb and index finger along with the palm, and then press Control and the plus sign on the numpad. This will automatically add a Boolean union modifier to all of the blocks, as you can see over on the right. Then click Apply All up at the top of the modifier stack. I find when I pick more than five or so objects and perform this operation, Blender can sometimes crash on me. So I'm going to do one finger at a time here just in case. To get rid of the box outlines, go over to the layer panel on the right, and you can see that all but the last mesh you selected are now hidden in the final render. You can click on the visibility toggle to hide them now, as we don't need them anymore. To get these toggles, click on the filter button up on the top right of the screen, right behind the eyebrows of my super cool logo here. Now that the objects are joined, we are now going to use the voxel remesher to start sculpting in some finer details. To adjust the voxel size, you can press Shift R, and you're going to see this grid pop up. The lower the number, the higher the resolution. To perform the voxel remesh, you can press Control R. You can see when I remesh the object, we get some ugly artifacts between the fingers. This is because our fingers are too close and or our voxel size is too big. I'm just going to turn on the overlay statistics here just to make sure my poly count doesn't get out of control and bog my computer down. Okay, so I'm going to control Z that remesh since I don't like the artifacts. And then I'm going to go up to the menu and make it a little bit smaller and see how it looks. It's going to be a little bit of experimentation here. The artifacts are much better this second time around, but still more than I want. The poly count in the top left is still relatively low, so I'm going to make the voxel size even smaller and keep trying until the artifacts are no longer significant while at the same time watching my poly count to keep it lower than a million or two. Usually if my poly count gets up over two million, my computer starts really slowing down. 
If you are in 2.9 like I am, you can get the old 2.8 status bar back by enabling it in the edit preferences menu, as I learned later. Okay, so I'm happy with that voxel size. Now I'm gonna smooth everything out by holding shift. Now with the clay strips brush, I'm gonna start forming the knuckles and start adding in the first layer of detail. In my other video, I go over how to add in small micro details like wrinkles later. Now I'm going to use the crease brush and start adding in some channels between the knuckles. Things are looking a little crooked though as you can see, so I'm going to use the deform brush to pull things over and try again. Now I'm going to use the crease brush to accentuate the folds in the fingers where the joints are. Here I'm inverting the crease brush by holding control to create some subtle suggestion of the bones in the hand. You can also use the pinch brush here to get a similar effect. Using some scrape brush to flatten out the tops of the fingers a bit. Now I'm using the snake hook brush to pull out the fingernails.
Now I'm going to use the mask tool here by pressing M and then up to the top toolbar I'm going to increase the strength to 1 and then change the fall off from smooth to constant. This makes the mask brush strong with hard edges. Then I'm going to draw in the shape of a fingernail like this. Then I'm going to press Control i to invert the mask and then change the deform brush to pull out a fingernail. The black part of the mask will be unaffected by your brush. You can also model a fingernail out of a plane and then sculpt around it if you want a more realistic look. Here I'm just going for a more simple approach. Now some more inverted crease brush to accentuate the finger joints a bit. And that's it. We're done for now. Hit me up on social media and show me what you ended up with. Or let me know if I messed up or could have done something better. Thanks for watching guys. I hope it helped and see you in the next one.